Our Old Testament reading today will be from Proverbs chapter 8. Does not, with, does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call. And my cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, of the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were, were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, for the first of the dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always. Rejoicing in its inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our psalm today is Psalm 8, verses 1 through 9. Thank 
chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the men of Israel. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to haze, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make be full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with, with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and, foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ that he was not to abandon to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out, for, poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Holy Gospel is found recorded in John chapter 8, verses 48 through 59, as follows. The Jews answered, answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan, a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not see my own glory, but the one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly I say to you, 
If anyone keeps my word, he will never see them. Jews said to him, Now we know you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than, the, than our father Abraham, who died? The prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies, of whom you say, He is our God. But you, <clears throat> but you have not come to know Him. I do know. If I were to say that I do not know, I would be a liar like you. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jew said to him, You are not yet 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself. Look out of the temple. Difference of reading the gospel lesson. To fear your name, let your word be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path to Christ our Lord. God's word for us this morning is taken from John chapter 8, verses 48 to 59. Uh, the Jews answered and said to him, Do you not rightly say that you are a Samaritan? And have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. But I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly I say, uh, Amen, Amen, I say to you. For the sins of them, yet I tell you what, 
if anyone keeps my word, he will never, ever see death. So the Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Surely you're not greater than our father Abraham, who died. Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, he is our God. And you have not come to know him, but I really know him. And if I say that I don't really know him, I will be a liar like you. But I do really know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you're not 50 years old yet, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus uh, hid himself, or was hidden, and went out of the temple. God's word. <coughs> and it, it sort of wondered me why they have this text for Trinity Sunday because here you have the Father and Jesus, but where's the Holy Spirit? But he's there. But um, anyway, then I sort of want to start out with this bit talking about the real Jesus and who he really is. And it reminded, reminded me of a story. No, but, uh, I won't give you the, the, the whole background, but um, any, how many ladies out there know what a coach purse is? And, you know what a coach purse is? It's like they're expensive. Okay. So, regardless of how the conversation started, uh, this lady related this to me. She says uh, that uh, this is a coach purse story. She was out uh, uh, yard setting, you know, one Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, and I stopped this place, and the, the, the lady of the house was, was there, and she was uh, about, to, about to leave, and her, leaving her husband in charge. And she said, oh, just get rid of it. So she was looking around, and she saw this coach purse there with the tags on yet. So she kind of waiting until the lady left. And, uh, how much was hers? Whatever. She says, a quarter? Five Because the mister had no idea what, what you know, because he, he, he doesn't carry a phone. He's doing it. So she goes, she leaves with her brand new coach purse for a quarter. On Monday morning, she was a wonder all excited because she had gone to the to the uh, outlet mall and she got a really good deal on a new coach purse. <laughs> and so Bob got a new one. How much did she pay for it? And she didn't want to tell her. So she promised she dragged it out of her. And she's like, no. So the lady grabs my friend's purse, comes down to the table. Then looks inside and says, "It's real." It was like a thinking that this was, was this was this could not be a real coach purse. So in this text, we see the real Jesus, who He really is, and what we, what that really means for us. Why that really makes sense? What? Why that really matters. You know, who he really is. First of all, so who he is not. He is not a Samaritan and with a demon. It reminded me of, of, of the late Herman Cain, that the, the folks on the left whose Bible is the, the rules for radicals, 
It was dedicated to Lucifer, which is a whole other story. The, the, in the acronym, he said it was S I M. They shifted the subject, ignored the facts, and made a call. And this is exactly what these are doing. They, 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 uh, because he supported him too close to the truth in the, in the first part of the revolution, in the light of the world. And it's like, they're shifting. Um, isn't it true that you're a Samaritan? And have a demon too? That this is where all this stuff is coming from? He has no right to be saying things to them, first of all. His doctrine is demonic. It's like, it's like you got some nerve. But he's the son of God. So and so you know, and the eighth commandment goes just the other window. It's another story. But and we never do anything like that, do we? Uh, anyway, but he's not someone to make uh, a, out to make a name for himself. He is the, the the he honors the true his true father. He speaks his word. I says, it's not, I'm not telling you my stuff. I didn't make this up. God told me, God told me to do this, say this. It's the word of, it's the word of grace, the word of the grace of God through which he is to be praised, loved, and honored by believers. That's the message. That's what he is conveying from his father, his real father. Not some Samaritan, but God. He is the suffering servant of Isaiah, God's representative. He is humble and meek. He's there not to, to be served, but to serve, to give his life a ransom for many. And, and who he is, is he really God? He is the I am, the one who appeared to Moses in the burning book. What appeared in Joshua before the, before the Battle of Jericho. It pops up every once in a while in the Old Testament. You know, the Malach Yahweh, the angel of the Lord. And he, you know, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Like I said in the Old Testament lesson, that's what that's all about. Psalm 33, 6, by the word of the, the Lord were the heavens made and by the breath of us now of all their hopes. By whom all things were made, as we confess in the creed. He is the one and only Son conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is Emmanuel, the God, the with us God. And not only that, not only is he really God, not some Samaritan with a demon. Thank you. But he's a real man. <clears throat> you're not yet 50 years old. You're about 33. You're just a young, you're just a young guy. You're not 50 years old yet. He was born. He grew up. Went to the, went to the, went to the uh, temple at 12 years old and was sitting there uh, having these theological discussions with these burning folks, they're going, where'd you get this stuff? And he walked, ate, slept, and suffered, and died, and rose again. Yet without sin, he is our substitute. He is a real man. He is real. He's a real God. But what does that mean for us? He's the one who really knows God. That's the, that's the you know, I was translating this and it's like, oh, really? Because the ESV kind of dropped the, dropped the ball. But there are two words for now. Or at least they have the two different words that he used. He says, uh, you don't have really come to know God. But I do know him. I really do know him. He can, and so he can bring us into a real relationship with God because he really knows God. Boy, does he know God. 
That's why he came in the, fir the first place. He was promised from the beginning. It was the voice of God walking, you know, walk, uh, walking in the, in the garden in the cool of the day. And, and Adam and Adam and Kawa are going, oh, because they knew what that meant. So that's another story. But then he comes to him and he says, he says I'm going to fix this. I'm going to enmity between, enmity between you and the woman, your seed and her seed, so forth. God take, makes the first move. That, that they might know you, the true God, and the oh, true God and Jesus Christ. That's what he prays in chapter 17. So, and eternal, that he is eternal life. The I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. John 10. That's why he came. He is our advocate with the Father. In first John, the one who is at God's side who speaks for us in God's presence. I ascend to my father and your father, to my God and your God. He is at God's right hand. He really is our man upstairs. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the way into the presence of God. Like in Hebrews, he is the he is the the veil was rent in two, just as he was. Now we have entrance into the very presence of God. And he is the truth. He is God in his total unhiddenness. He shows us what God is really like. Not what we think he might be like, based on our interpretation of the word, but what he's really like. And he is the life in whom we live and move and have our being in us. We have come to know who comes to us in baptism and in the voice of her. Because he is God's official representative. He is God's emissary who was raised up. Like in, like it says in the Old Testament. First lesson. Second lesson. Uh, yes. Uh, in Acts, Peter has this sermon. He says, God raised him up. God did this. He raised up his servant Jesus, his son Jesus. You know, basically the baptism of Jesus. We have the dove descending and the voice from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Transfiguration to you. And this is in fulfillment of what God said back in Deuteronomy 18. He said, I'm going to raise, raise up someone for you. Well, you. They've been looking for this, for this guy for a long time. Now he's finally here and says, You can't be this guy. No, get our, get our template. Okay. So he was attested to them by, by signs and wonders. That's what Peter's, Peter's preaching this to the people in, in, in uh, Acts in Jerusalem, some of which might have been in the crowd and said, Crucify him. We don't know. Um, but and in John and in John nine, this is bring you coming in that now. That's not next week's epistle lesson. But the next chapter, you see Jesus healing a man who was born blind. It wasn't that he lost his sight; he could never see in the first place. And and the, the testimony is there. From the beginning of time, there's never, you know, this, this guy is, is not going to be the sign. Anyway, that it was not the way to bring friends in and close people among the Bible. But with authority in his teaching and his power over demons, we know who you are. You're the Holy One of God, begging him not. So, and then Matthew 28, all authority, all authority, not just part of it, all of it, they give it to me in heaven and earth, and therefore, you go and you do this. But he is the bearer of God's official pronouncement, therefore, the, the, the preaching of the law as often as necessary. To those who really needed it, like the folks he's talking to, who really needed it, 
we need to know how the cow made the cabbage because they have this concept of the scriptures as a do-it-yourself righteousness gift. There's no such thing. And when they needed it, even, even the disciples, when they needed it, they're, they're Jesus preaching the law because they need it. At the, you know, the, Lord, you're not going to die. It's like, yes, I am. And so forth. You know, timing is everything in that regard. But, and, some, and sometimes, us today, when we mess up and do like, do like they did, and the Eighth Commandment goes out the window and other times, because there's nine other ones too yet. But preaches the law to us, tells us the way things really are. It's the doctor diagnosing us that you got this instead of lying to us and say, I'm your body. We don't want that. We want the doctor to tell us exactly what's wrong. And we fix it. But, but also to announce the good news. That's that's what he brought up in, in, in Nazareth. This is is there the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the, 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 the release of the captive, to those in need of it. We do need that. We do need that word. And other people that we know need that word. So we say, I'll do that. And Matthew 9. The guy who his friends couldn't get into the house, what are we going to do? Ah, uh -huh. go over here to dig a hole and let him down in there. And the first thing Jesus says was not that he was healed, but your sins are forgiven. And the, and the Pharisees are going to come. Who says God think he is and even forgive sins? Well, just so you know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. The bearer of good news. And why that, and why that really matters. This thing goes in and bragging if you can do it. He is. He is. He is how we really get to know God. Not like the Jews in the text. We think that they have this all figured out. They do all these things and to make God like them, and God's going to have to say, Yes. No. But he is, you know, and, and as John said in the end, of, the end of his first letter, he gives the true God an eternal life. He doesn't just show, show us the way. He does teach. He says, keep my word. But also, he is the I am. I am the sent me. The I am the light of the world. And you hate this. And the Jews get it. He's calling himself God. And he's like, you can't do that. He's like, he's pregnant if you can do it. He is the Lord of life and death, and miracles and breaking the widow's son. Chapter 9, the guy who's born blind. Nobody ever did this before. The guy who was healed, this guy had to get it. And then Lazarus, who's been dead four days, Jesus says, come out. And then the big one. In the, in the resurrection, there was, a, there was a YouTube video. Some guy was doing research and whatnot, and um, without going into the whole nine yards, scientifically, they were looking at it and stuff that they, could, they know now that they couldn't know years ago. But that the light, they they think, is what made the image intense light. Very intense light from inside, and that the body was moving. So, 
because of the because of the way the image is. So this is cool. But he is the I am. He's not some Samaritan with a demon. He's really God. And so as and, you know, and Luther says, he who grasps and retains Christ has thus also eternal deliverance from death. So it is a word of life. And it is true that whoever keeps the word shall never see death. Keeping is not by, by law and by doing following the directions and telling your own little righteousness test. But keeping it is keeping it in the heart by faith. Interesting. He said that he will never see death. And then they said, taste of death. Two different concepts. But anyway, but he is the redeemer, the one who comes to us in our trouble, in our in our times of trial and trouble. He is all that's almost how it works. It's the Garden of Eden. God makes the first move, he comes to them in the burning bush in Gideon. Again, the Mala Yahweh appears. He comes to them first. He steps, God, you know, God makes the first move. He steps into the situation to help in time of need to put things right again, our redeemed work, to bring us back to original condition. And he restores and renews. That's what he does for one sacrament. He does this all the time, because we need it all the time. We keep messing it up. But the that but the God is there to bring us. Back to original condition to new life to restore our relationship. And Dr. Luther had, had a couple of really good paragraphs I want to share about this because he this was a sermon for in Lent in the old in the old. But uh, read through this is good stuff. We all must face death and die, but a Christian neither tastes nor sees it. That is, he doesn't feel it. He's not terrified by it. And he enters death calmly and quietly, as, as though falling asleep, and yet does not die. For just as he who falls asleep doesn't know how it happens, and he greets the morning when he awakes, so shall we suddenly arise on the last day and never know how we entered because, well, short answer is because of Jesus, the I am, because he's real. Amen. This is God who passes all human understanding, can't stand God over your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's rise and crush our Christian faith with the word.